correlations, I love a good correlation, me. Um, part of inferential statistics, and it's a measure of the linear relationship between two variables. It's not about causality. So you can't say if I get this, if this variable causes this response. That's not what correlation does. All it will tell you is that there is a relationship. And a correlation coefficient has a value that ranges from negative 1 to 1. Values that are closer to 1, to the absolute value of 1, say that there's a strong relationship to the variables being correlated, and values closer to zero say that there's little or no linear relationship. A positive correlation indicates that there is a positive linear relationship between the variables. So what that means is, as one variable increases in value, so does the other one. So when I was talking about questionnaire design and knowing how you code your data, this is why that knowledge is important. Um, so an example of two variables that are positively correlated are the number of days a student attends class and test grades. Because as the number of classes attended increases in value, so do the test grades. The argument would be that if you, if you have 100% attendance, you're going to get a higher, higher grade in your test. Um, a negative value indicates a negative relationship. So as one variable goes up, the other one goes down. So the more days you miss class, the lower your test scores. But you can do it. There's correlations. It's about knowing what question to ask. So there is a, 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 strong, a strong correlation between sales of ice cream and murder. Because if you think about it, <laughs> when it's very, very hot, people eat more ice cream. But also when it's very, very hot, people get more short-tempered, they get angrier, they get, they're stuck in a bus with a load of other horrible, sweaty people, and the murder rate goes up. So there's no actual causality. You can't say eating more ice cream means you're more likely to murder somebody. But there is a relationship, but you have to unpick it. Um, and again, this is whack. It's saying you need to know how you've, how you've scored things. So let me show you. Here is a correlation um, matrix um, between um, admiration of John Barrowman, how many shoes you own, and what your sex is. And you have to look at it to make some sense, to think about this to make some sense. So there is a, there is a, a strong, uh, well, a medium negative correlation between what gender you are and admiration for John Barrowman. Now this is why I have to know how I um, graded my um, questionnaire. Most people, well, a lot of people, when they're grading gender, will have one for men and two for women. But because I'm a feminist and I think women are better than men, I always have one for women and two for men. The reason that's important, um, apart from it being offensive to men, is because I've got a negative correlation, that means as one value goes down, one value goes up. So I've graded women as a one, so they'll have a lower value on the sex score. And I graded admir admiring John Barrowman as a five. So there is a medium negative, statistically significant correlation between being a woman and admiring John Barrowman. Is that making sense to everybody? Let me see, run it by you one more time. It's about knowing, because, it, because it's based on the numbers that you've put into the database. So it's not making any, any assumptions, it's just working on the numbers. Um, because I, I, the numbers I put in for gender was one for women, two for men, I have to bear that in mind. Um, because of how I graded the categories on John Barrowman, so it was a five-point scale, and it went five for admiring, I can't remember what the school, what thing, four for pretty okay, three for don't think about him, two, don't know who he is, one, he's an idiot. So... If I, if I ticked five or four, and I ticked one because I'm a woman, I've got a high score 
for admiration for John Barrowman, a low score for sex, because I get one, so it's a negative correlation. Um, most statistics textbooks will say one to three is a weak correlation, four to six is a medium correlation, seven and above is a strong correlation. So we've got a correlation here that's minus 0 0.407. So that's a medium correlation. Um, we've got a significance at 0 0.002, so we're, we're pretty significant on that. So that hasn't happened by accident. However, I did this in the Department of Nursing, where we are heavily gender biased towards women. So you would have to put some context to it. You couldn't just assume that all oh, women like John Barrowman. Um, in much the same way, looking at the, 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 uh, the row below, you couldn't automatically assume that all women like shoes. Although, that's a pretty safe assumption, I think, with apologies to my gender. But again, you can see there, we've got a, we've got a, a, a negative, weak correlation um, that's significant at the 0 0.01 level between your sex and how many shoes you own. And that, that's... So it's, it's understanding the data at that level. If I was going to write that up, I'd report it like this. The relationship between being a fan of the entertainer John Barrowman and sex... Actually, I should, I should change that and make it say gender, really, shouldn't I? Thinking about it. Um, was investigated using Spearman Row. Why did I use Spearman Row? Because my data was non-parametric. If, if it was parametric data, I'd have used Pearson. There was a medium negative correlation between the two variables. Um, and R is always used to designate a correlation. And the subscript S tells you it's Spearman's. Ironically, you don't have to put a little P there if you've used Pearson, but because it's a subscript S, that shows you it's, Pierce, Pierce, it's Spearman, and so it's non-parametric. And my, my, my correlation was um, minus 0 0.407, an N of 55, P being less than 0 0.001, with low levels of admiration being associated with male respondents. So that tells you everything you need to know. Women like him, blokes don't. However, <laughs> correlations are a really good example of knowing what question you want to ask the data before you start your analysis. Um, and when, you're in, when, when people are a novice at this, what they, what they tend to do is run every single variable as a correlation and they end up with a massive, massive correlation matrix. And because SPSS is very kind and very helpful, it will highlight the statistically significant correlations. But if, if you haven't thought to ask that question or if it's not answering a specific question, it will just mislead you. So the ones we've just looked at arguably could be seen to make sense. But then let's have a look at these. Okay, what we've got here is a statistically significant, significant weak positive correlation between which way you face in the shower and whether you think breakfast is the most important meal of the day. That's rubbish. Isn't it? That doesn't make absolutely no sense. Unless you're facing away from the water in the shower so you don't get your porridge wet. Um, there's also a um, weak, statistic, positive, statistically significant correlation between the number of pets you've owned across your lifespan and which way you face in the shower. It's, it's rubbish. It's, not, it's just nonsense. It's statistically significant, but it's not significant in the real world in any possible... And who would ask that question? Who would look at the data and go, what I really want to know is, you know, does which way you face to wash your hair make a difference to how many pets you've had? It's, it's, it's a nonsense. So if I just did that as a correlation matrix, I might get very excited thinking I've got statistically significant results, but I've got statistically significant results in a totally meaningless concept. So you really need to know what question you want to answer before you start your data analysis. Or, if you're reading this in a paper, what question the authors thought they were asking and have they